Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of What The Hall. I am your host, Mohammed, and it is the first of the month. So that means this is going to be the new ends episode for the month of August. And I've been around the world and I, no, no. Over the last 30 days, I've been all over, looked at different things, and I've compiled a list of four different range of products or specific items that I think are most exciting and that could speak to you. Um, I've got my laptop ready to go. I've got some set cards because this week, this month's episode is going to be more fragrance focused. So we're going to get right into it. The first thing that came up on my radar this month is from Estee Lauder. At Estee Lauder, they have the Hero product, the skincare icon, the advanced night repair. And from time to time, they will do a revamp of this product. So nothing ever overtakes the classic serum, but they always do add-ons. So for the loyal customers, they give them something new every so often just to introduce it to their routines and to switch things up if they are faithful to that product. Uh, they've done capsules. They've done oils. Um, I remember when I was on counter, they used to have the classic serum and they had another bottle that was in an opaque container. It, it's constantly revolving. And so this year they've come out with a new product called the Night Repair Rescue Solution Serum with Bifidus Ferment. So the ferment is like the key in all of the night repair products. It's the thing that really helps to transform and repair skin. That's what they talk about at Lauder. And what's compelling about this product in particular, in the marketing and in the copy, it talks specifically about repairing skin post chemical peel. So if you're somebody like me who from time to time will go to the Medispas, go for like a superficial treatment, like a Jesner peel, this is supposed to be your post care, your after care uh, to help get your skin back on track and make it look as healthy as possible. Or when I was speaking to the lady on the counter, she said to me, uh, they suggest using this as a seasonal treatment or when your skin is stressed. And I was told that you can layer this with the serum, the classic, or you can use it in place of your classic serum. So um, definitely one to look into if you're looking for a new serum or if you're a fan of night repair. Along with this launch, they've come out with a new cleansing jelly and a cleansing balm makeup remover, I think they probably are going to phase out the micro foam and the micro balm, which were supposed to complement the micro essence. But I don't think micro essence ever took off, at least not in North America, um, the way Night Repair has like a chokehold on everyone. So I think that's what's happening is they're probably pivoting away from micro essence and just kind of focusing and zeroing in on Night Repair. The second thing that I wanted to speak about is from Diptyque. It's a brand that has me in a chokehold. I'm, I've spent stupid money at Diptyque. And so they have like this really clear formula in terms of coming out with new launches. And it's actually really timely. I believe if it hasn't already, they will be opening their second Toronto store somewhere on Yorkville Ave. And I believe it's going to be probably in the same vicinity as like over the rainbow, possibly where the Louboutin store is. Every Christmas, you're going to get a, a winter festive collection, sapine candles, beautiful packaging, ornaments, all sorts. Come Valentine's Day, you will get an updated version of the rose scents. And then after that, they usually do an updated version of a signature candle and fragrance. This year they did, I think, Tam Dat, no, Dusan and Tuberose in like turquoise packaging. And then come summertime, they always launch the summer range, which is primarily the citronelle candle and sometimes an accompanying fragrance. Now, the citronelle candle, I understand, you know, candles or pricey candles will put a lot of people off, especially in this economic climate. But that said, if you're somebody who does a lot of entertaining, maybe you have a beautiful uh, backyard and, you know, you have like to do a tablescape or maybe you have a balcony where you like to sit out and relax and barbecue. The brand describes it as the herborium of flowers, herborium meaning preserve flowers. It's a combination of lemongrass, verbena, neroli and orange blossom. It's just a beautiful scent. I don't know if it's going to be as efficacious as a true citronella bug repellent but it's an elevated experience. Again, it's for that person who likes entertaining outdoors throughout the summer, or I think this would be a beautiful hostess gift if you are being invited over to a barbecue and you know you have friends who would appreciate, appreciate such an item. And to partner with 
the candle. They've come out with a limited edition summer fragrance that's called Ilio. It's a combination of prickly pear, bergamot, jasmine, and iris. All notes that I really liked. Unfortunately, I lost the scent card. But when I was perusing the Dipti counter, I smelt it. It was very nice. I thought it was a very easy fragrance to wear for anyone. And if you don't like the idea of fragrance, it also comes in a hair mist. So you can just kind of refresh your hair and have that beautiful sunny fragrance to go with you all day. Circling back to Diptyque opening up a second store, wouldn't it be interesting if they, like Shanghai, Tokyo, Londres, and all these other places, if Toronto had its own candle, what would the smell of Toronto be? Because oh, screw face and snobbery, next. So the next thing that came out on my radar is an old favorite. So at Prada, they have three ranges of fragrances. They have their, you know, standard, premium products that you find in Duty Freeze, Paradox, uh, Candy, Luna Rosa. Then they have their infusion range. And then in the Prada boutiques, you have the Olifactory, which are the uh, opaque or like navy bottles with the gold plaques. But the infusion, which is kind of in the middle, it's almost at a Tom Ford price point. I think they're about 200 Canadian. It's got like Joe Malone vibes meets Prada Energy with the silver plaque and the rope. I love the packaging of this, but more so than the packaging, they are exquisite fragrances. They're very complex. You know, you smell one thing at first and then they really develop and transform into something really exceptional. I was a long time wearer of Infusion de Homme, which is now Infusion de Cidre. They came out with a fig fragrance. Now, at first I went to the Prada store because on the Prada set, you can see what stock is available where and I was fishing, fishing, fishing. They didn't have it, but they do have candles as well, circling back to Diptyque. So maybe consider a Prada candle. I couldn't find the tester at the, the Prada store, so I go to Hudson Bay. When I get to the bay, they have all the fragrances, but not all of the testers. So as I was rummaging, I wanna just shout out the vanilla scent. That's quite exceptional. Definitely look out for it. Not overly sweet, very beautiful fragrance. And the fig, I eventually did smell it at another location where I did find a tester. I really had to hunt this one out. I've worn several fig fragrances that you know I've been obsessed with. The top of the top for me has always been the Fico di Amalfi from Aqua de Parma. It's very fresh, very sunny, very easy to wear. Then you have the Diptyque Philosikos, the Art of Parfum version, which is very green, very warm, earthy. And then at the very bottom, the richest, the earthiest one that I've ever had and long discontinued is from Marc Jacobs. Uh, they used to have the Marc Jacobs for men. Beautiful, beautiful scents, RIP. And so this fig from Prada is somewhere right in the middle, not quite as rich as the men's Marc Jacob, but not as, as green as uh, the Philosophos from Diptyque. So it's somewhere in that spectrum. It's a little fruity. It's got a little bit of that fig quality to it, but it's very deep very robust and it's leaning more masculine that that's the way i would describe it so definitely go to your local department store try to smell this one see how it lasts on your skin i love fig fragrances i will try any fig scent this one is impressive but it's not as good as some of the others i've had in the past in the process of making notes for this episode it just came up on wwd that prada now that it's part of l'oreal is doing the valentino playbook so Valentino and Prada were both a part of Puge, a Spanish business that makes incredible fragrances, Paco, Carolina Herrera, and so on. When Valentino came to L'Oreal, what did they start doing? They got into the makeup game, cushions, lipsticks, all the stuff, right? And so is Prada. Now Prada has come up with Paradox, all sorts of blockbuster fragrances, candy, like I said, and now they're doing a range of makeup and it looks, and skincare as well, it looks like it's all refillable. This isn't their first time at the rodeo. In the early noughties, late nineties, they used to have a range of skincare that was all monodose. Everything was in sachets or little capsules. It was designed by famous industrial designer, Kareem Rashid. RIP to that, in this era, we're not trying to do monodose stuff, right? we want to minimize our waste. And so they're trying to do a color and skincare line where it looks like everything's refillable, the foundation, the eyeshadows. I don't know that there's an appetite for another brand to do more makeup. If you think about the fashion pyramid, you have Haute Couture at the very top, which is a loss maker. And every design house has a range of fragrances and cosmetics, which are 
easily accessible to your average man in the streets. And because they're so widely distributed, they really help to prop up these businesses and get them to their multi-billion dollar valuations. The last thing that I want to talk about, and this is something that's actually budget friendly for once. So this is from a brand called Solinotes and I have the fragrance cards. Unfortunately, the Prada, the Prada Cedar really overtook these um, other scents. So this brand Solinotes, it is, uh, it launched in 2010. It's a very youthful brand. If you've ever seen Company de Provence, which is a um, home and bath range, this is kind of like the same sort of design. It's very provincial France. It's got the same sort of common notes that you'd see at places like L'Occitane, etc. Every bottle of fragrance is an eau de parfum. It's a combination of synthetic and natural ingredients. They are priced at about $28 Canadian, which is very accessible. The idea with this brand is you mix and match. You can buy one or two different fragrances and create your own sort of wardrobe of scents to match your mood or the occasion. I really like this idea. I, what I tested out, I was most impressed by the musk scent and the jasmine scent. My friend who was with the, at the store at that time tried cotton, is a really good scent. If you like fragrances, the clean cotton scents, you'll love that fragrance as well. So, you know, if you just wanna switch up and you wanna have maybe something that you could wear very easily, not be precious about it, and just kind of have a, a short shower in, take a look at this brand. In Canada, you'll find this merchandised at Shoppers Beauty Boutiques, where they have all the premium fragrances, your Pradas, your Armani's, all of that. And I believe in America, this brand is available at Target, right? So very easy to get your hands on. And of course, uh, Shoppers Drug Mart does have e-commerce. So anyone in Canada, no matter where you are, you can get a ship to you and you can get some rewards points out of it. So that's a roundup of the newness for this month. The daylight is gone. I wanted to record a second video wearing this shirt. I might just come back on camera wearing it. I don't care. I'm going to shave and do all the rest of it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is this is my channel. I can wear this shirt every single time I come to record if I want to. As always, do whatever is in your heart, whether that be a thumbs up, a comment, a thumbs down, a subscribe, whatever you feel like doing, do that. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank me for speaking. I will catch you in the next one. Adios.